with HMO and health care plans. So get your insurance card out and give us a call. And now, here's your host, Jeff Ogden. Crockett Country, presented by Loophole. The common American black bear is a species unique to North America. Since prehistoric times, he has been found from present-day Alaska throughout the Canadian provinces in 32 of the lower 48 states and the northern reaches of Mexico. While the vast majority of black bears live in the north and west, healthy populations can be found on the east coast, south through the Appalachian Mountains, and across the southeast from Florida to southern Louisiana. The black bear population is presently rising across almost all of his ranges. Literally accounting for each and every black bear is an impossible task, but scientific estimates currently put the number at one million animals almost double the amount of black bears reported in a 1977 survey. 70% of the world's black bears reside within the provinces of Canada. Of these, the most storied for its black bear, and therefore black bear hunting, is British Columbia. Mark Werner and his wife Andrea are owner-operators of BC Guide Outfitters. Mark is also the current president of GOABC, the Guide Outfitter Association, of British Columbia. In 2010, Mark donated a spring black bear hunt in his area for auction to GOABC to raise funds for their organization, a donation that had a well-traveled life cycle. I donated the bear hunt to the GOABC Association and Buck Buckner and Keith Belford from the Boone Crockett Club were there and they came and talked to me about the hunt and they said that they were looking to buy a hunt for the Boone Crockett Club to auction off at their awards presentation. So we talked and sure enough they bought it and I understand that John was the buyer at their awards presentation. One of my good friends uh, killed the number three musk ox in the Boone and Crockett record book and was going to be honored at the uh, banquet. I think it was the 27th banquet last year and he suggested that a couple couples of us go up there and, and take our wives and enjoy the convention and the banquet. For me, I'll be 68 in August, and I've been wanting to hunt bears all my life, and this came up at the auction, and I just stuck my hand up and, and pulled the trigger. <laughs> I just bought the hunt, so I finally did it. Black bear are hunted in most regions in North America on a split season basis, with the majority of hunters preferring spring hunts over fall. In the spring, and in BC in particular, Bears are predictably hunted just shortly after they have emerged from their winter hibernation, a reawakening that begins by the 1st of May. The groggy bear's first order of business is food. In this hunt, what we're really doing is we know that the bears are on the roads right now, gorging themselves to try to get some fat on and get the digestive tract going. And so we're hitting all the high points and glassing these spots, walking some of these green grassy roads where necessary, going back up into some private land that has really good concentrations of alfalfa and clover. And lots of these side skids trails on the logging blocks have real high concentrations of clover. So we're checking some of those out. And lots of glassing on long straight stretches, watching the bears, and really trying to hunt the peak times of, of when these bears are moving. Well, this grassy, like you can see the loggers, when they, would have, when they would have put this road back to bed, they would have seeded this heavy with, with a reclamation grass mix. And it's got lots of clover and alfalfa, which really sets good roots and holds, mm -hmm. holds the bank together. Holds the bank down. So the bears, they love that in the spring when they first come out. They want to get their digestive tract going. And uh, so they're attracted to it. They can smell it. And you can see this one bear, he's got scat there. That's an older one. This is a fresher one. So he's living right here. Chances are that bear is only 150, 200 yards back in the bush. And he'll be here this evening feeding. 
So we'll watch the spot, but this historically, I've taken probably three or four big bears off this spot. And it's like I was saying early, a big bear spot is always, always a big, big bear, bear spot. Yeah. It's, it's always good for some reason, but it's just, it's got the feed. <coughs> yeah, that's why. So we will come back and check this out. Okay. This is what they're after right there. Uh-huh, the clover. Clover. Yeah. So they're watching us right now. Yogi and his buddy. <laughs> Feel the eyes on you, huh? <laughs> we'll come back. Okay. Boone and Crockett Country is in partnership with the Wild Sheep Foundation, putting and keeping sheep on the mountain, and the Dallas Safari Club, promoting conservation and ethical hunting worldwide. The Loophole VXR puts a new light on illuminated scopes. Fiber optic technology shines brightly in any condition. Index match lenses and exceptional light transmission extend precious minutes at dawn or dusk. Your choice of five exclusive fire dot reticles and the ruggedness that's the hallmark of every loophole scope. So go ahead, light him up with the new VXR, only from loophole. Fair Chase is an ideal that has guided sportsmen for more than 100 years. It's a code we live by. It's what we teach our children. It was first promoted by Boone and Crockett Club when there was little game left to hunt. Today, Fair Chase exemplifies the honorable role sportsmen play in wildlife conservation. There's one magazine and one organization dedicated to the belief that sportsmen are still the best hope for all wildlife. Please subscribe today. Hunt hard, hunt safe, and hunt Fair Chase. Whether you hunt one day a year or over 150 days by yourself or with, with the family. family. Buck introduces the new Pack Light Fieldmaster because different jobs require different knives. This kit is perfect for easy carry and easy cleaning. All three knives are packed in one convenient sheet. One knife for skinning, one for caping, and a convenient gut hook. When weight counts, pack light and cut easy. We carry a lot of gear. But the only knife we carry is a buck. The Dallas Safari Club is a great organization that really walks the walk in fulfilling their mission statement. DSC has given over $2.2 million over the last four years to fund conservation projects, to fund their outdoor education program, and to finance advocacy efforts to help protect your rights as a hunter and an outdoors person. Wildlife needs dedicated people like you to make a commitment to our future. This week, guess who gets to sit in the deer stand and film Matt Moret? It's Blake Shelton behind the camera, ladies and gentlemen. Can Matt and Blake call in a big one and still stay friends? Because you're worthless, Matt. It's not funny. Hunter Specialties Outdoors, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, only on Outdoor Channel. Join the next generation of outdoorsmen as they experience the greatest challenges that scouting has to offer. Scouting for Adventure, presented by Coleman, Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern, only on Outdoor Channel. The province of British Columbia has a long and rich history of guiding and outfitting for big game. Its diversity of habitat and vast tracts of unsoiled backcountry offer 16 of North America's 32 big game species. No other state or province offers this much diversity in hunting opportunity. The Guide Outfitters Association of British Columbia is a membership organization of outfitters from across the province, but also includes within its ranks members of the Yukon Outfitters Association, which adds Alaska Yukon Moose and Barren Ground Caribou under the guardianship of GOABC. With such diversity, the roots and traditions of outfitting run deep in British Columbia, dating back to the early 1800s. This is when news of the abundance of big game first began to filter out of the mountains, carried by fur trappers and gold prospectors, boasting about the other treasures they had encountered. The Guide Outfitter Association of BC, we have around 190 members, and we provide a liaison with government as well as supporting our members with all of the programs such as insurance and uh, other essential services. One of these essentials that has become of increasing importance of late is conflict with all stakeholders over the wildlife resources and the habitat that supports them. One of the services that we do is through our Fish Wildlife Habitat Committee. If there's an issue with an outfitter or just advice on how to work with different licensees and other stakeholders, we can provide a liaison and advice to dealing with these large companies. 
A lot of our operators don't have the resources, the time, or the expertise to deal with the large stakeholders, oil and gas, mining companies, etc. But our office of our association, they do, and we have experts, and we use consultants as well. So we assist our members when it comes to impacts from other stakeholders on the wildlife and on the habitat. Okay, what we're gonna do, John, is the bears should be out feeding on the clover and the ditches right now. And we're just gonna catch them feeding, and there's some high places that we can park in glass. Okay. And some places that we can uh, see them from a distance. At least that's the plan. Okay, I'm in for the plan. See that log that's all tore up? Oh yeah, okay. That's them looking for looking for grubs and there's some on your side too. Yeah. Okay. Just and then you can see what happens. Right up here. See the bear that walks along here and it goes from stump to stump. See, it's right over here. Yep. This one's really good. And over the winter, like that oxidizes, that turns gray. I mean, you can always tell. See, he, he hit all of those. Tears it apart looking for ants, looking for grubs. And he'll just walk along here and he'll just keep ripping them apart as he goes. And they'll do that even before the greens. That's the first thing they'll go after is, uh, is that. In BC, we separate ourselves from other jurisdictions and provinces and we pride ourselves pretty much on the spot and stock aspect of it. We have thick bush, we have mountains, we have habitat that allows us to see these bears while they're coming out feeding early in the spring, allowing us to see anywhere from a couple to five to 10 bears a day. And that's kind of a unique experience for the guys. And so BC's really separated themselves in marketing that spot and stock opportunity. I could hear your heart pounding. That would be surprised. <laughs> There's nothing like stalking bears like that. I, I love it. That's, if you're asking why you chose not to have mating in these. Yeah. Because you just can't, you just can't duplicate that. That's a great experience. Yeah. That was a nice bear, wasn't it? Yeah, real nice. Yeah, beautiful. The hide was just, the I hair was like, yeah, like that no, long. I could see that. He was just fluffy. And beautiful. Yeah, he's gorgeous. Beautiful. Just eating along, eating the grass yeah. and the clover. He had no idea we were there for a while and then he pinned us down on that corner. Mm -hmm. He wasn't sure what we were, these big blobs in the middle of the road. He couldn't smell us. They don't see well, do they? No, not at that range. He could see that there was a shape, yeah. but he couldn't see what, what the shape was. They, were, they rely on their smell. Uh -huh. They have the nose, of 50 times of a bloodhound. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Fresh out of their winter's sleep, black bear are much more predictable and therefore patternable than other times of the year. They are also dependent on favorable weather to provide immediate green up for fast food without extended travel. If spring is late in coming, mature bears can and do return to their dens. What will be left out and about are younger, less experienced bears until weather and nutritional conditions improve. Something I didn't know, they shed their pads on their feet, and so their, their tender feet when they come out, their uh, pads are not toughened up yet, just like a human would be walking on rocks, so the bears uh, don't move very far, and they feed on this clover along the edge of the road. John, look at this bear. This is fresh, because it's still green. Okay. This oxidizes right away, and it turns black, like within an hour. So this bear was just here. He's probably feeding on one of these green little skid trails. He's feeding on the clover. This is, this is recent. What we'll do is we'll just hike up here a little bit further and then we can glass across that clear cut. That would be a good vantage point. Yeah. Let's go for a little walk. Okay. Boone and Crockett Country is in partnership with Buck Knives, knives that fit your life and the Pope and Young Club, for the good of bow hunting. Serious bow hunters represent a dedicated, close-knit group. They care deeply about preserving our hunting heritage and bow hunting opportunities. For the past half century, one organization has worked tirelessly to ensure that bow hunting has a voice, to provide the best scientific information helping guide critical decisions impacting wildlife and bow hunting. Today's Pope and Young Club represents responsible fair chase hunting. It is, in fact, America's foremost pro-bow hunting, pro-conservation organization. Join our crusade for the future of bow hunting. Thank you.
For those beckoned by the faraway wild. For those who feel the call in their soul. For those who live for the hunt. We built this rifle for you. The Nosler Model 48 Trophy Grade Rifle. Learn more at TrophyRifle.com. Many times, record book bucks cause you to stray off the grid where few weekend warriors care to go. Hunters like Pete Alfano knows the quest for the best requires supreme skill, dedication, and the best gear. The Scentlock Headhunter System answers the call by providing superior scent control technology that's ready for almost any situation. An advanced soft shell resists weather and remains tough and quiet under the most extreme conditions, while articulated arms, shoulders, and knees allow for maximum range of movement when it's on the line. Scentlock. Taste victory. Primo Silver XP works wonders at eliminating existing odors and stopping human odors. And our new continuous spray gives you complete coverage. Silver XP continuous fogging spray provides up to 80% more coverage and eliminates open areas you aren't getting with a traditional pump sprayer. Get Silver XP continuous spray because if you're going to do something, you should do it completely. Are you ready for this summer's new look? The buzz is sexy skin, and you can have it too. The secret is the deep cleansing wash from Proactive. It keeps your chest, back, and shoulders clear, and it's yours free with this special summertime. A deep cleansing wash and these extras free. A Call yeah, he is. Damn, he looks pretty good right there. Yeah, he's nice. Okay, we're gonna go up 20 yards, we'll stop again. See, he's a bit, he's not blocky enough, right? His belly isn't, yeah. uh, it's not hanging down a whole lot, and it's got more of a foxy head. And also the space between the ears. The oh, ears are bigger. It's not wide enough. The ears look big on the head, okay. and, they're quite, and they're spaced closer together. Okay. But he does look like a small boar. I don't think it's a sow. I think it's a small boar. Mm -hmm. He sure is a pretty color. He's though, about a three-year-old boar. He's a gorgeous bear, I tell you. Yeah, he really is. If he was six feet, we'd be taking him. He's on to us now. He's had enough. Mm. <laughs> He's done. That was fun. That was fun. Boy. Well, he stopped there and at last and turned. Yeah. He's a boar. He's just a younger boy. Yeah, he looked good. <laughs> He'll be good in about two years. <laughs> Increasingly, questions are being raised about wildlife. Who should have access to them? If this access should be use or non-use, and if use, who gets what? Even in a relatively sparsely populated province like British Columbia, with its vast, open, and rarely accessed expanses teeming with wildlife, these questions are becoming more prevalent. More people than ever are weighing in, including activists seeking their no-hunting agenda and resident hunters wanting more tags, all while the thirst for timber and energy is driving the hands of man deeper into the backcountry. Combined, there is a lot of conversation taking place in British Columbia right now, and GOABC is addressing these issues and the divide they are creating. The wildlife resource, it's a public interest. You know, it really doesn't belong to the outfitters and it really doesn't belong to the resident hunters. It does belong to all of us, taxpayers. Really what we should be doing as, as the users and the stakeholders is coming together to grow more wildlife through proper habitat management, through predator control, and lobbying government for what we need and having a strong objective and a strong mandate for growing wildlife. And generally if we can find that common ground rather than fighting over the pieces of the pie, we would probably have more than enough allocation for all the groups. So we're taking those steps. We're going to begin to make wildlife stewardship one of our main focuses. And we've partnered with many good organizations, including the Boone and Crockett Club. And they're now a key partner of the JUABC in this uh, movement towards wildlife stewardship. The relationship of Boone and Crockett, it really started with a couple years ago. The attraction between the organizations is really the, the tenants of Fair Chase and the recognizing of that way of hunting that 
not is becoming lost, but it has the potential to become lost if we don't protect it. Mark said there was a good bear, and we stopped the truck. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to sneak out, and we're going to go down this ditch on the left. Down there where this white mound is up there? Yeah, we're just going to we're gonna try to close the distance when we get up by them trees, and we're going to have to go slow because then we'll be within range. We both kind of realized that the wind was wrong for us, that we were going to be stalking downwind instead of upwind. And we thought we'd go try and get close to it anyway, see if we could get a look at it. He's a good bear. Okay. Go ahead, John. I heard a good hit. I heard, heard a solid hit. Yeah, I think you hit him all right. Do we need to give him just, a minute? Just give him a few minutes, yeah. Okay. How'd that feel? Felt good. Good? Good. Yeah. It looked good. And it sounded all right. Just give it a minute. Yeah, I think you got him, buddy. Right on the white. Right on the white. Yeah. Way to go. Thank you. I think we're okay. When I came down last night, I could hear uh, movement back in the bush there. And when I went in up to the bush line, then I heard that, um, like a growling sound. And it wasn't really like the death rattle, but uh, from the positioning that he is, he was just waiting in there to see whatever was following him. And uh, that's how you get yourself in trouble. I've almost had a bear charge me once before when I went to recover it. So that's why we backed out last night and went back to camp for, for supper and came back today under better conditions. Okay. So we'll go down, we'll go down. Right. Let's go down and see your bear. That night, replaying that shot over and over in my head to make sure that I thought I had made a good shot, but I was, I was replaying that. That was kind of nerve wracking. The, the weight wasn't a real pleasant thing. He's a beauty. Oh yeah. Nice boar. I've been wanting to do this for 50 years, and I finally got here. This is great. When the boars start to get a little older, they get that dimple in the head when, we, when we're glassing bears and judging them from a distance. And I see that, that tells me more uh, of the class of bear that we're looking at. You know, by the look of his teeth, he's in prime shape. He's still, uh, he's still a very productive, nice big breeding boar, but he's got that dimple, which his skull, uh, we're gonna measure it, but it could be close to 18. But his paw, that is what I like. He's a, he's a big, that's a big paw. <laughs> Look at those claws. And his pelt is just absolutely yes, spring, so this spring is pelt. Absolutely that's prime. Well, that's what I wanted, a pretty black one. He's, he's probably only been out of the den for a week, 10 days. Uh -huh. And he has a white spot on his chest, which we can't see right now, but there's a little. Oh, yeah. Traditional white spot for our area. And it looks like you hit him right there, uh -huh. which was fatal. Very nice bear action. Great. Yeah, I've been mostly a stand hunter or a bait hunter, and getting out and doing a spot and stalk is uh, is really the difference in hunting and shooting. I think I've been a shooter in the past, and this was a hunting trip. I was just very very pleased. It was such a beautiful bear. Uh, I was very very proud and very pleased and the whole experience came together. It was just, it was really neat. Boone and Crockett Country has been brought to you by Leupold, America's Optics Authority, and the Boone and Crockett Club, fair chase and conservation since 1887. The RCX from Leupold turns the game camera into a game changer. Real-time video alignment and an exclusive controller let you easily program multiple cameras. Download and view high-res images and video in the field and at home. Advanced dual sensor technology extends effective range to more than 90 feet, and blink of an eye trigger speed catches all the action. Change the game with the new RCX trail camera system, only from Loophole. Nearly $80 million raised for conservation, disease research, habitat enhancement, and population augmentation. Join the Wild Sheep Foundation and ensure the future of wild sheep and your hunting heritage. Visit wildsheepfoundation.org for more information.
Has this ever happened to you? Summit Climbing Stands, featuring the new dead metal technology, takes the vibration out of the platform, reducing the resonance and noise associated with limbs and other obstacles, allowing hunters to enter and exit their setup more quietly than ever before. For more information, visit Summit on the web at summitstands.com. Summit Tree Stands, 30 years and climbing. The new Covert CX-2 Crossbow from Carbon Express is like no other. With its revolutionary Biosync 3 design, it's not just a well-balanced crossbow, it's a system integrating body, bow, and bolt, creating a feeling that can only be described as second nature, perfectly balancing hunter and weapon. Experience the Covert CX-2 Crossbow today. Shoot better, Carbon Express. The hunting traditions in British Columbia are as strong as anywhere in North America, maybe even more so due to the diversity of big game and the amount of wilderness still within its borders. It just may be this same vastness that lures us into the comfort of thinking that there are at least some places left untouched by the demands of man or under the influence of uninformed citizens. Vast wilderness and abundant wildlife aside, Many people today remain uneducated over who the real vanguards for wildlife are and how these resources must be managed if they are to stay with us into the future. For those who have tasted a small slice of British Columbia and must go back, and those who fight to keep the big game outfitting traditions alive, this comfort level is becoming less comfortable. I haven't seen a lot of bears in the wild. I saw more this week than, uh, than all the rest of my life put together, including zoos, probably. <laughs> I'm already plotting how to get back here next year. <laughs> the Werners are just great folks. I have such admiration for Mark's hunting skills. It's just a great, great lot of fun. So yes, I'll probably try to get back and bring a friend or two with me and possibly one of my sons. It certainly is. Um something that you can't do many places and it's not a growing industry in terms of guy territories in BC it's, it's actually uh, shrinking a little bit just because of some takeovers of areas being turned back into non-hunting areas by environmentalists trying to buy them and although you know we want the members to do what's good for them I actually find it a shame that these territories that were traditional territories outfits for generations are being turned into non-hunting territories and these groups have the money to buy them and then shut down the hunting. But I think government needs to preserve this industry and to make sure that these territories are not all bought up and shut down. The right to hunt and hunting's value was established centuries ago. For some, these messages have somehow gotten lost along the way. The good news is hunters, anglers, and the outfitter associations that service them are more organized now than ever to reassert what has proven to be the best for all man, wildlife, and the habitats we both live in. Closed captioning provided by the Dallas Safari Club, promoting conservation and ethical hunting worldwide. Carbon Express Sunday Spotlight. Up next, Dead Down.